moments that will terrify you a little bit, but I also want to make sure that I'm trusting the, the Lord and the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you singing this song, and I'm just listening to the words and talking about the idols in our lives and the things that hold us back and the moments that we really want to lean into Jesus, but there's something that always kind of seems to keep us back. And I think it's, I think it's the lack of faith or the lack of belief. It may be a situation in our lives that cause that. I don't know what it is for you, but I know there's been moments in my life where I've wanted God to do something and I begged God to do something. And I've cried out these words, Lord, all I want is you, but I don't know what to do. I don't even know what it looks like. And I think what's on the other side of what we want in life and in faith, I love this concept of tonight of faith rising. But if we really want to see revival take place, I think there has to be a little bit more than faith. There's got to be belief. And I think we lean into faith a lot, and that's good, and that is important. But when's the last time you've prayed in belief? expecting God to do what you're going to ask him to do. Because if you're like me, a lot of times I'll ask God to do something, but in the back of my mind, I've got doubt. And it's unbelief. And I don't know what it was. I was back there and I'm listening to the words of the song and I just felt the Holy Spirit to say pray. To say pray. And prayer can be uncomfortable. Prayer can do can make people feel a, little, a certain way, but here's what I'm going to, I'm going to trust that this is from God, but when's the last time have you really diligently just eliminated all the distractions, laid down the idols of your life, and hit your needs, and just asked God, begged God, cried and wept out to God, God, I'm going to pray in faith, but I'm going to pray in belief that you're going to do what I want you to do. And so I'm going to trust this is from Him, and I want to take advantage of this opportunity, and I want to pray. So if we could do this, it's going to take some time, and this is, we'll just count this as my sermon time, so just, we'll just trust this. So Paul said, do it. So here's what I want. Let's just, let's just utilize this room. So maybe spread out over this room, and I'm going to give you some parameters, all right? First, I want you to start out, and I want you to pray by yourself, okay? If you've never prayed before, don't worry about it. I got you, okay? Trust me. I got you. If you're uncomfortable, find a seat and just sit. That's fine. But let's, let's kind of spread out all over this room. Utilize this space. Find a, a spot to maybe get on your knees. Let's just do that. Either find a chair and use a chair as an altar. Maybe get on your knees on the floor and put your arms and your elbows in the chair. Or maybe get along the wall. You can sit Indian style. You can sit down. You can do whatever you want. Get up to a place where you feel like there's no distractions around you. Let's try to keep this moment. Don't Let's not talk. Let's not be a distraction. If you know somebody's going to be a distraction for you, maybe... Maybe move away from them. sermon plan but I don't know why but maybe this is all the Lord's asking is before I can do anything before any revival could take place our people must humble themselves and pray and seek the Lord's face and ask me to do what only I can do and so right now in this moment I want you to answer this question What does my relationship with Jesus look like right now? Are you close to him? On a scale of one to 10, if you had to answer right now, would you say I'm a one as far away from God as I can be? Or I'm a 10, or maybe right in the middle where is your relationship with Jesus right now? What does your relationship with Jesus look like right now? Be honest. The 
second thing I want you to think about, and this is very important for all of us in this room. What sin in your life, what is that sin in your life that's keeping you from being all in with Jesus? And I'm going to ask that you identify that sin and you hand it over to Jesus tonight. You see, before any move of God can take place, there must be repentance that happens first. Before God can use you, before God can, can do whatever you're asking him to do, you got to lay down that sin because that sin is what separates us from a holy God. And we all have sin. The Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So nobody in this room is exempt, myself included, the band included, your leaders included. So we're all in this together. But would you hand over that sin to Jesus right now? And would you just say something like this in the best way that you know how? And maybe you need to say it out loud. Just say, Lord, would you forgive me of the sin in my life and hand it over? Tonight I'm handing this sin over to you. I no longer want to be bound by the sin. I no longer want to be bound by the chains that the enemy has me entangled. I want to be free. I want this bondage to be released. However you know how to, just hand that over to him. God, forgive me. Maybe you're angry at God. If you're honest, you just want to beat the ground right now because you're so angry with God. Let him know about it. He's a big God. He can handle it. Let him know I'm angry with you. I don't understand. I've got so many questions to life. I don't understand. Why does my life look this way? Why do I feel this way? Why do things keep happening the way they're happening? Give it to him. Hand it over to him. Lord, forgive me. Maybe there's some gossip going on in this room. Maybe there's some anger or some animosity towards somebody in this room. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit pierces your heart and that there will be forgiveness in this room, that there will be unity in this room, that maybe even somebody would get up and go find someone. Maybe it's a leader. Maybe somebody needs to pick up the phone and make a phone call back home and say, would you forgive me? I'm sorry. Maybe even today somebody has said something to hurt someone or to tear somebody down. God, would you bring unity in this room? Maybe somebody's been hurt by somebody. Maybe there's abuse where that's physical, emotional, sexual abuse. Somebody in this room has been affected by that. God, would you allow them to forgive that person? They're not justifying the person. They're not saying that what that person did to them is is okay. That's not what we're saying. But God, we are going to forgive. God, you said that there's freedom in forgiveness. So God, would you allow them to let it go? Would you allow them to forgive that person or those people? God, that you say it's not up to us to judge anybody or to cast wrath on anybody, but you hold that in your hands. And so God, we're going to hand it over to you. And in doing so, we're taking the anger and we're giving peace. God, would you provide that peace through the forgiveness What do you want to see God do? If right now God could do anything in your life, if you were to lift it up in faith and in belief, if he were to answer that prayer tonight, 
what would that be? And how would the answer to that prayer impact and benefit and change the culture and the world around you? Or would it just benefit you? I'm going to ask that whatever that is that you've identified, whatever it is that you are asking God to do. And it's more than hitting a home run. It's more than acing a test. It's more than the boyfriend or the girlfriend. This is like, God, if you did this in my life, if this happened in my life, no longer would my life look the same. No longer would my family or those around me look the same. But God, if you did this, maybe it's a revival in your family. Maybe it's salvation for a parent or a sibling. Maybe it's salvation for a friend. Maybe it's revival within your student ministry. Maybe it's revival within your church or your community. Maybe it's you laying down your life, surrendering it to ministry or mission. Maybe it's leaving a friend group. Maybe it's leaving that boyfriend or that girlfriend. I want to ask that you would pray in belief tonight, in faith tonight. Let the faith in Jesus rise to the top and let it overflow into every aspect of your life and to those around you. Would you pray right now in belief? God, do it. God, do it. most powerful things you can do when you don't know what to say, you don't know what to pray, is just say the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus has power. Scripture says that it's the name above all names. It's the name that brings salvation. It's the name that brings healing. It's the name that moves mountains. It's the name that brings it's the name that brings forgiveness. It's the name that brings expectation, anticipation. It's the name that brings miracles to life. It's the name that laid down its life, his life for the sake of everyone in this room and for the the billions of people across the globe. It's the name of Jesus that has power. Can we say that name together, the name of Jesus? Just say Jesus. Just say the name of Jesus. Say Jesus. Everybody together, say Jesus. If you believe it, say Jesus. If you want to see revival happen in your home, say Jesus. If you want to see revival in this room, say Jesus. If you want Jesus to forgive you of your sins, say Jesus. To answer that prayer that you just lifted up, say Jesus. For revival in your student ministry, say Jesus. For the brokenness around you, say Jesus. For that dream and that aspiration that you have, say Jesus. It's the name of Jesus that can do anything. It's the name of Jesus that we're here this weekend. It's the name of Jesus that some of you have surrendered to him this weekend. You've stepped out of darkness into life. It's the name of Jesus in this room that we're we're not going back the way we came. It's the name of Jesus that we say because some of you in this moment feel a faith rising in you right now that you haven't felt in years. Maybe it's been squished down because of life, but right now the name of Jesus, say Jesus, You want to believe in him, and you feel that he is here, and you feel his presence. And here's the reality. When you speak the name of Jesus, say, Jesus, 
there's power that comes with that, and it's the power of the promised Holy Spirit. And when you step into a relationship with Jesus, you get that power. And because of that power, you have the ability to move mountains. You have the ability to see chains gone and freedom happen. It's the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Say Jesus. So when we speak that name, things change. And some of you just needed to hear that name tonight. Some of you needed to remember the day of your salvation. You could go back to that moment. Because some of you have been mustering up as much energy as you can to just lift a hand and to sing songs. But right now in this moment, Jesus is letting you know that he's with you. For the skeptic in the room and the one that was on edge and is really uncomfortable in these moments, Jesus is telling you that he sees you and that in your uncomfortability that he's speaking to you, he's whispering in your ear, letting you know that I know your doubt and I see your unbelief. But if you just put your faith and trust in me, I will show you things that you couldn't even ask, seek, or imagine. For the Pharisee in the room, the one that says one thing but lives another, Jesus is telling you right now, no more living a lie. No more living with a mask on your face. Take the mask off and cast it aside. Draw a line in the ground saying, I'm either in or I'm out. But the name of Jesus will reveal the truth. Step into that truth tonight. It's the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. What I want us to do is in this moment, you can stay where you are. We're going to sing this song. And I don't want you to move. I don't want you to do anything. But when you feel like you're ready, when you're ready, I want you to stand and I want you to sing. But I want you to stay in this moment as long as you need it. We're not going to rush it. But we're going to trust that Jesus is in this moment. God, would you have your way? Holy Spirit, would you move how you want to move? (laughs) We may not get to anything else tonight, but Lord, what we want you to know is we want to speak the name of Jesus over every circumstance, every situation, every doubt, every anxiety, every situation in this room. We're going to speak the name of Jesus over it, and we're going to lift up a mighty voice and a mighty roar. So Jesus, we give you this moment. We're going to sing. When you're ready, you can move. starts to break declaring there's hope and there's freedom I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life Shine through the shadows, light the fire. 
Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never
never stop, never stop. Oh, come on, you take it, you sing. Make it your song. Even when I don't see it to work. He made a way, so we praise Him. Even when I full of faith, we stay. It's not praise, we say. He'll never stop.
sometimes there's experiences in our life and then there are moments I believe experiences are great but experiences can fade and experiences only last a, a short time but moments will last a lifetime I think Jesus just gave us a moment in this room amen I think Jesus just gave us a moment And I want you to remember this moment. You know, we talked about night one. We talked about T-I-O-T-M. What's that mean? You know, the only difference on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning, you know what the only difference in those two days in an event like this is? It's the attitude and the mindset and the heart of worship in which you bring to it. It's the only difference. This could happen every single week. What you feel in your heart can happen every single morning when you put your feet on the ground and you wake up and say, Jesus, I'm going to let my faith rise where it impacts and it overflows into every avenue of my life. And what we're going to talk about in the morning is a result of when students just like you, when that actually happens and when it lives out, it's not just hope rising. It's not just praise rising. It's not just faith rising. We've experienced it back home. Revival actually rises. So what I'm going to do right now, if, if, I'm, if I'm okay to do this, am I okay to dismiss them to group time? So what I want to do is I don't want to lose this moment, okay? So I'm going to ask you, can I trust you? Can I trust you? I don't want to lose this moment. So what can happen in this moment is when we leave and we dismiss, all chaos breaks loose. I don't want to lose this moment. So I'm going to ask if, if I can trust you in this moment. If I can trust you, say yeah. Say, Will, you can trust me. Okay. I'm going to ask that you not be a distraction, but let's keep this moment. We're going to go to your family group time. And here's what I want you to do in that family group time. I want you to talk about that first question I had us think through when we were praying. What does your relationship with Jesus look like right now? And I want you to discuss that. And here's the thing. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want you to be honest about it. Nobody's going to shame you. Nobody's going to judge you. We want to walk through this with you. And nobody's going to manipulate you into any type of decision. Okay? You can trust us in that. But I want us to be honest about that question. And I want us to be honest about this moment. What does your faith look like in Jesus right now? Let's try not to talk. Let's keep this moment. You guys are dismissed. Grab your things and go out quietly to your family group time. Thank you, guys.